All right, ladies and gentlemen, check this out. I bought this at Fort Worth for five bucks at the flea market down there. And it's a brass headed hammer, brass sledgehammer. Uh, not sure the maker's mark. It has a H3 and then it says, I think it's AS Adam Sam Corporation. And then it has a number, looks like a 120 dash 20. Can't see what you guys can see. <coughs> I price these brass hammers like these, these little sledges. <coughs> if it's an old one, like I think it is, which I'm pretty sure it is, the, I've looked at the the mark that's on here online. A couple, it could be a couple of different companies, but I could be looking at. Uh, Fifty-five dollars to I've seen them as high as four hundred and forty-nine ninety-five for some of the new ones. If you look at the head, it's mushroomed, and it's mushroomed this direction. I'm just going to clean the mushroom up. I'm not going to try to square or plane it. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave some character in it. I'm going to clean it up, polish it up a little bit make it look nice but I'll, I just need a good usable hammer and I I own this makes the third brass hammer I have now I have a real small one that you can use for gunsmithing things like that and then I have a great big one that's I say a big one I think I got a 10 pounder 8 pounder uh, and that one is a Wilton and I really have no use for that great big one uh, but I'm gonna keep it since I got it. I, I mean, I could use it at work if I have to, but this, this would make a good, this is a good hammer. And it has a good handle. It's just, uh, they didn't set it right. You know, they used a, a washer to seat it, which I'm gonna, I'll, I'll fix that. And they're, uh, there again, everybody has their own way of seating hammerheads. I just, like to note that back in the day when I first started working in construction and framing and I didn't do as much framing as I did sheetrock and other things but when I did the old timer the old man that showed me how to do things he's been dead two decades but he he'd fix them on the fly he would if it came loose if it started coming loose he fixed it right then he stopped what he was doing whatever job he was doing he would fix the hammer he would pop it off He'd either cut the head down, cut the handle down. He'd always had spare handles. He had the oddball handles in his truck and his toolbox, and he'd fix his hammer. And he never glued his wood shims in, which I know there's guys out there that do that, but there's a lot of guys that don't. They don't glue their shims in. And his was that if he had to take it apart, take it loose, he could fix it without having to scrap the head because you glued the shim in. Uh, scrap the handle, excuse me. Uh, so that's the way I do it. I know you guys have commented about gluing the shims in. That's uh, that's fine. That's the way you do it. But I do know. I'll show. I'll I'll, I'll uh, look it up. But there's a guy on there. To, uh, some brothers that do uh, framing construction, and they don't glue their. And one of the reasons is, is the if it comes loose on a job site, you can fix it without having to cut the head off, and then drilling the wood out of the head. Uh, a lot of times you can pop the head off, reseat it, and put a new shim in. But anyways, that's a. I'm just going to clean this up. I'm going to reseat it, and I've got to. I make a shim. I, I, I don't have a wood shim, a wood uh, or a metal shim. I'm going to buy some, but that's something else. The old man I worked with. He would, it's pretty cool what he would do, slugs. Uh, some of you guys outside the country don't know what slugs are, but back in the day, a lot of your electrical boxes that you mount in your houses and your junction boxes would have knockouts. And he would take those knockouts and save some of the bigger ones on the bigger boxes, like the one inch knockouts. And he would shape them and 
that's what he would use for a metal shim because they were plentiful. We didn't have to buy a shim. He would use, and back in the day, you got to remember too. This is, you know, late seventies, early eighties. Uh, you still could get boxes that were really. They, the boxes were heavy. The slugs were heavy. They were thicker than a quarter sometimes. Uh, so we would put them on a grinder, shape them how we want, and he'd notch the side of them a little bit, and that's what he would use for a uh, uh, a wood or metal shim inside the top of the head would be a slug. He'd just trim it down to fit. That, Anyways, I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, everybody has their own. I know the Swedish, uh, I've heard that they like like an eighth or three sixteenths past their head. Uh, I particularly don't like that. It, it just, to me, doesn't look good. Uh, I like a clean, you know, I like it. I like it clean like that. That's what I like. I like it nice and looks good. It's uniform. And like I said, if it gets loose, I'll fix it. It's no big deal. Anyways, let's go back to cleaning the head and talking about hammers. You guys are very knowledgeable. You don't need my word into it. It's just what I've done and what I've learned. It's funny, all the old timers I've used to work with or have worked with, they're all gone. I'm the only one left that, that remembers some of this stuff. It's kind of cool and it's kind of sad too because a lot of history and a lot of knowledge is lost when someone passes on. It's just, it's sad to see that. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to cleaning this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean this up here, this mushrooming on the belt sander. But I can tell after I cleaned it, well, I touch it with my dirty gloves, I'm leaving more dirt on it. But you can see the, I'm gonna leave it just like this. I'm just gonna polish it up, except I'm gonna clean the mushroom. That's all I'm gonna do. I just wanted to show you guys the uh, impressions. This has a nice little hammer. I guess it was a 32 ounce or 28 ounce. I have to weigh it just to find out. All right, let's go on.
right guys I'm gonna put it on the one inch belt sander just to clean this part up I don't want to take any more off of this I I don't care I, I kind of like the looks of it you know a lot of people will clean it up to make it look brand new I really just want a good usable hammer so there again my tools my rules I'm gonna go ahead and just polish it up and kind of leave the den the character in it I you know you guys some of you guys out there may want this look like a brand new piece of art but I just want a good usable tool uh, anyways let's go to the belt the one inch I may have to my gloves are bothering me they're starting to fall apart so anyways let's go over to the belt sander I got a little carried away. I didn't, I'm gonna leave this the way it is. Just polish this up. I didn't really need to do that. I did it anyways. Left a lot of the nicks and pings in it. It's kind of cool though. AS Corporation 120-20. I thought it was a six, but I think it's a dash 20. Maybe it is dash 26. I'm gonna have to look under the magnifying glass. Anyways. Let's go to the polishing wheel.
All right, that's all I'm going to do. I polished the head and the, the nose and oh, look at that, I left all the dents. All the dents and deans. I think it looks pretty cool. And I just wanted to say that I could have used Red Rouge, but I didn't want to walk over to the cabinet to get it. And I've done this with black before. Uh, I can get a high, little higher luster with uh, black, I mean with the red, but the black works just as fine. For you, those of you guys out there that uh, are real anal about your polishing, that's fine. I'm just, this is just a good usable tool. Uh, it's clean, it looks pretty for me. I mean, it, look, head's crooked too. It's got a little bit of a slant to it. You can tell, looks like the person, let's see. You know, I think the person that hit this might have been left-handed because it's sloped here. Well, I guess you could do it right-handed. Yeah, it could have been right-handed too because it's definitely sloped. But I ain't gonna take any of that off, the heck with it. Anyways, let's, uh, let's work on the handle. I know some of you guys will probably think I'm crazy, but uh, I found something on this, sanding it. There is a mark, and it says, Hickory, made in USA. So, this thing's, this might be the original handle. Ah, it's pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm excited. Ah, you guys might think I'm crazy, but hey, my hammer. I'm gonna trim this up just a little bit. I need to, I need to get me some carving tools. I keep giving my carving tools away to a fella at work. Yeah, I think I wish I would have kept one or two of them. I want this hammer to come down and slide seat just another quarter inch or lower down maybe. The shoulder come down just a little bit more. It should work. I really don't want to waste this handle. Especially now that it's an old hickory handle. You know, there's some tools you can clean up and make look real good. And oh yeah, that's gonna seat down even further now. Yeah, I can make that seat further down. Yeah, I think it's cool. I get, I get pretty bad when you get excited over just the old hand tool. All right, I want, I need to, I really need a better saw. Hang on a sec, I'm just wanna clean this up just a little bit. I thought there was something still in there. I know, I got a vice and I'm doing it in my hand. But I'm not really, I don't want to take a whole lot off. Spread good the way I want. I think I can do it. I think I think I can make it. I think I can make it work good. Sliding. 
Now, if I seat there, if I seat it like that, if I can get it to come up past about a quarter inch, Alright guys, I've got uh, my shim made, it's going to be pretty pretty close to what I want, so now it's the time to beat this on. i got some shims, I'm not sure which one I want to use, I bought, I bought a couple of different ones. Just to see what I needed to do, and I might probably use that one it looks like. Anyways, uh, I really need to use seating pretty good. I'm hoping that I may have to use a bigger shim. real good I'm happy with that now I'm looking at my shim I think I want a wider shim yep I want a wider shim want I want I want There's a, there's a couple of brothers that have a Perkins Builders, uh, Perkins Builder Brothers. I'll, I'll type, I'll put that in my uh, description in my video, but they, uh, they're the way, they, they seat their hammers the way we used to back in the day on a job site. And this, I know you guys, you know, you guys like Scout Crafter and some of the other guys, I've seen them glue their shims in and stuff, but that's not the way I was taught, so that's not the way I do it. Let me put this over on the, oh, it's a little long. I really want to put this on the vise and, or on the anvil I've made kind of tap it in there on the anvil. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I got my shim in there. Cut that off and then put the metal in it. That should do pretty good. That's on there. And just clean up a little bit on the bottom. All right, let me uh, put this in the vise and cut it off. Whoop. Let's see. Oh, thought I had it tight enough moves on me.
Jim. All right, let's go up. Get ready to place my shim. You know, I have some somebody will probably say, "Well, you got some splitting or something up." You know, you're going to have that. There's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes it just happens. But once I get the wedge in there. It's not going to go nowhere. And we'll get a punch and set it a little, a little more deeper, and then I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. Man, it's going to be a good-looking hammer. All right, be right back. All right really need someone to hold this for me this is one of my punches that was in the fire that I salvaged some people don't like the the marks that leaves but I don't care it's a hammer it's my hammer It definitely don't want to go in there. That's it. That's all I'm getting. So now I'm going to clean that up on the belt sander and then uh, we'll see what it looks like. All right, guys, I'm about done with it. I'm going to put a little wax on it, and then uh, I'm going to put some uh, linseed oil on the, uh, the uh, wood. I actually have to linseed, a couple, put some oil on some of the other hammers that I've got here, and pretty cool hammer. I know, I know. Some of you guys don't like the way I set the head, but that's the way I was taught, so that's the way I do it. If you, like I say, if you're if you're interested in watching a little short video, it's what we used to do in construction work. Uh, it's called Perkins Builder Brothers, and they've got a video on how they uh, they reset us to Leto Hammer, which is a pretty cool little video. I thought I, I looked at several. Because I know, uh, uh, I can't remember now who commented and said that, you know, Scout Crafter and others glue their shims in. Eh, I, I'm not saying that's wrong. Actually, I kind of think that's a good idea. Uh, but it's the way I was taught. Just, you know, I can get this shim out. I can take this hammer apart if I want to. If I was to glue it in, then I'd have to cut this and drill it out. Don't need to do that. All right, let's get another towel here. That's a cool hammer. I like. I don't. You know, I can. I can even polish this even brighter. I mean, I can make it look like gold. It's pretty bright, actually. Pretty now. Pretty good now. I, the lady did, oops, my hammer fell. The lady that sold me this, the Mexican lady at the flea market there in Fort Worth, I don't think she knew what she had. I present you, it looks like AMPCO. It looks like the logo is actually upside down. I'm trying to look in the camera. It looks like A M P C O. 
but it says 120 dash it is a 26 I thought that was a 20 but that's a 26 I mean, look at that. I left the dings and dent in the back of it. I think that's cool. I don't, it just, it's been used. I'm not going to hide it. Uh, I won't use this very often, but I have one. Actually, that's got some weight. It has as much weight. No, this one's actually heavy. Let me get my blue point. Yeah. That's what it feels like. It feels like this blue point. Yeah. You know what I should have done? I should have put it on a stubby. Because I like the stubby handles. Man. Uh, all right, well, let me, uh, H3AS Corporation 120-26 present you a really nice and old hickory wood handle made in USA it's already stamped in there I'm glad I when I cleaned it I sanded it I didn't take all that off I left somebody drilled some hand holes which that's kind of cool I don't know I, I think it's fascinating I, I like old tools I wish they could tell the history of who owned it and what they did I'd like to know where this was used let me uh, let me grandmother uh, Brass hammers, I'll show you what I got. I only own three brass hammers. This is a Wilton, and this one's been used. I bought this out of the pawn shop. I don't remember what I gave for it, but it wasn't much. This thing's got some weight. I don't know what it weighs, but it's this one here is expensive too. I didn't realize brass hammers were this expensive. And this, I believe someone made it in a shop class or a, a, a milling you know may add some spare time on a lathe and goofed off and made this this is cool I like this I, I've never used it I've got it but now I've got this and it's a it's cool it's a different brass this is like bright yellow brass and this one's different and I never tried cleaning this one up like I don't care because yeah, it's it's made to be this one was used it's made to be used more than likely, this big one was used in the oil field. A lot of natural gas wells where I live. Uh, so, yeah. Especially around the oil field and methane, you know. This one here, I think, uh, was about $164, $167. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. $5 hammer. That's what I paid for it. I uh, reset the head, cleaned it up a little bit. I didn't go gung-ho, I didn't make a piece of art out of it. But it's a good usable hammer, good handle, hickory handle. It's an old one. Cool beans. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you like my video, give me a thumbs up if you would. Subscribe if you would. I uh, hope you enjoy uh, me uh, piddling with my tools here. These, uh, like I said, tools for me make me money or save me money. Even if you only use a tool one time, <laughs> you need it when you, and you got it, it makes your life so much easier when you have the right tool for the job. All right, guys, y'all have a good evening.